I don't think it's ever gonna stop raining. I think we're on day 12 of solid rain. I have forgotten what the sun even looks like. Normal rainfall in the month of February for Middle Tennessee is just a little over three inches. We just broke a record from 1880, and I think we're currently at 12 inches. It's not even the end of February yet, and they're calling for more heavy rain tonight. Is it ever going to end? But that means it's a great time for a shop series video, so stay tuned. And as always, we're gonna start off with your questions from the last video. Let's see, Fast Man says, always entertaining and informative. Thank you, Fast Man. Michael Feltenberger, hope I pronounced that right, Michael. Speedy, enjoy your videos. Have you already talked about the shop floor and I missed it, or is that up and coming? It is definitely coming, so stay tuned. We'll definitely do probably a whole video just about the shop floor because it was pretty involved in how we made that decision. Frank Lyle, who's been following along, says, good continuation, still digging the series. You got a fancy bracket for your remote. I just Velcro mine to the wall, keep the good info coming. Hey man, whatever works. I got the little bracket that came with the remote, but Velcro would work good too. Let's see, Overpar73, Speedy, I really enjoy all your videos. I think you must be my younger brother with all the attention to detail and everything you do. Extreme OCD is what my wife tells me. I'm trying to find some land to build a new house, and of course, I currently have 2018, 2013 Z01 convertibles and garnet red crystal torrid. Tells me about he's heavily modified both. Wife doesn't understand why he tears the car apart. Mine usually doesn't either, but Gotta have more power. Uh, says he goes to Bowling Green occasionally for some Camaro events, and uh, they've been having some really cold weather, so his cars are in hibernation. Hey, I'm right there with you, man. We're not getting cold weather, but, but it has rained for like almost two weeks straight, and I'm about to lose my mind. Inbound Light says, hey, Speedy, I love how in-depth your videos are. Quick question, I have a 2017 Challenger TA 5.7 and can't find the wheel lug nut torque specs anywhere. I've checked the manual, and it just isn't in there on my 2008 SRT8 Challenger. The specs was 110. Any suggestions? On my old RT, I used 110. 110 foot pounds. NHRA 7110 says, love the Boostane chug. Well, that actually came back to haunt me the next morning. Fitz Films Garage says, another great shop video, thanks. Thanks, Fitz. Bob P asks, is that a Sam Adams Boston Lager hiding in the koozie on your workbench? Another great video. Maybe. Weekend Climber says, you should check out Arlo for security cameras and Wink for smart lights. The Arlo cameras are completely wireless. Very cool with the only drawback being you have to take them down to charge them every couple of months depending on how they get tripped. I don't know if I'd want to have to fool with climbing up on a ladder and getting the lights down or the cameras down to charge them, but I'll check. Uh, smart lights are awesome and paired with Google Home or Alexa makes voice commands possible. That would be pretty cool. Be able to turn them on and off with voice. And our last comment was from CFM, CFM 17 Hellcat. Another great video. I do hope you have better luck with your Honeywell timers than I did looking forward to the paint info. So we will be talking about the paint. I'll go over everything I did for that. It'll be coming up very soon. And actually the little Honeywell timer that I have on the house lights has worked great. I can hear the um, relay give a very definitive click when they turn on and off. So I can see how that might wear over time, but mine is about four years old and so far no problems. All right, with the questions out of the way, let's get started on this week's episode. Okay, if you've just stumbled onto this video series, I'm gonna to link to the top to the very first one so that you can go back and see where we started. We've gone over uh, the, the ordinances we had to get with the city, demolition, the foundation, uh, concrete, framing, electrical, roof, brick, and doors and windows. So today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the insulation and the sheetrock. Now, you guys remember, we use six inch studs on the walls because of the height. We did uh, 12 foot ceilings, and because of that height and the way everything worked out with the uh, brickle block foundation, the builder wanted to use a two by six instead of the normal two by four. And I was all for that because number one, I wanted the shop to be kind of soundproof so that it wouldn't interrupt my neighbors. I can come out here and work on a car at three o'clock in the morning if I want to, and the extra thickness of the stud allowed thicker insulation to go in which adds some sound deadening. Plus you got the brick and the uh, plywood on the outside and all that. So it's actually very, very quiet. When I run the air compressor or when I run air tools, I've actually gone on the outside of the shop and you can't hear anything. You might hear just a light hum and just a light tap from a, an impact or something, but it is very, very quiet. And that's a result of the insulation. Now, the benefit of that extra insulation is that I don't have to run the mini split all that often. I don't, I think I mentioned in a couple of videos, I don't want to run it all the time to keep it a certain temperature in here. So what I did is I actually have a weather station and it's got a little remote. You can maybe see it 
Go ahead and do it down for you. It's got this little guy right here. And this talks back to a unit in the house that I keep in the kitchen. And it'll tell me the temperature in the kitchen, obviously, but it'll also tell me the temperature in the shop. And that way I can monitor the temperature and know if it starts to get too cold in here. I don't want it to ever get below freezing or close to freezing in the shop. And so I'm able to keep an eye on that. And we've had, not this year, but a couple of years ago, we had some very cold weather. It was probably, I don't think it got above freezing for 10 days maybe. The lows at night were single digit, which is very cold for Middle Tennessee. And I don't think the shop ever got below 38 degrees. And I went ahead and shut the water off. We talked about that last time with the water shutoffs. I shut everything off just to be safe, but it never got that cold in the shop. I didn't have to worry about anything freezing or anything giving us trouble. And I've shown this a couple of times. I keep this mounted to a cabinet right as I come in the shop door so I can kind of keep an eye on things. It, it monitors humidity and, and high and low temperatures. And as you can see, the low has been 52. The current temperature is 55. And the high actually has been 55. Well, the weather this week was probably in the 40s. And so as you can see, it never got below 52 in the shop. So that extra insulation is going a long way to keeping the shop at a proper temperature. And so here you can see how the insulation looked as it was going in. It was uh, R19 on the exterior shop walls as well as in the ceiling. And then I did want them to go ahead and do some insulation on the compressor closet for sound deadening. And so they used R13 on the compressor closet as you can see there. It's the standard roll insulation for everywhere that they could put it. And the areas in the ceiling that were um, insulated with that roll insulation had already been floored. And then when they finished the flooring out in the, in the attic, we'll call it, and got the sheetrock in, they came in and they blow in, the blow in style insulation to finish that out. Now, one other thing that this builder did, and maybe this is normal and I just didn't realize it, but it kind of surprised me, especially for just a, what I consider a shop build, is they actually came in after the insulation and everything was ready to go in and they put caulk in every crack everywhere, all around the doors, all around any of the windows, where the wood even came together, they caulked all of that. And so I was very surprised to see that level of insulation or insulating material go in for something that's really a detached garage or a detached shop. And as far as heat goes, I've, I've really rarely had to use the heat because uh, especially if I've been out driving one of the cars that I'm gonna work on, I can just pull it in the shop, open the hood and wait about 30 minutes and the shop will be comfortable. Uh, for me, in the wintertime when it's really cold outside, if the shop's, I don't know, 60 or 65 degrees, I've got on a sweatshirt or something, I'm pretty comfortable and I'm usually climbing around on the car anyway, so I'm kind of getting a workout. I don't get too hot with it set to that temperature. Uh, Mrs. Speedy comes out and does some work in here at times, and so she'll set the temperature to about 70 and run the, uh, the mini split, the Mr. Slim in the back. And it doesn't take long at all, maybe 15 or 20 minutes to heat the shop up to a nice comfortable temperature for her and it's usually between 68 and 72 degrees and it's nice and cozy and that's a result of having that insulation in and you'll remember when we built the shop i originally intended to do uh, 14 foot ceilings and the builder said hey we can actually lower that a couple of feet and do the trough for the lift posts and that saved a lot of cubic feet of air that didn't have to be heated and so um, that was a very good idea and i'm glad the builder recommended that so all in all the insulation the sheetrock and all that have gone a long way to keeping this shop extremely easy to heat and cool. Now, I talked about the heat, the cooling, the big problem I have here in Middle Tennessee is the humidity, so it might not be uh, necessarily hot in the shop. It might be 78 degrees, but the humidity will be like 82 or 85 or 90 percent, and it's like a sauna. And so I can come out here and turn the little Mr. Mr. Slim mini split on, run it for 20 or 30 minutes before I come out here and start working. And as I mentioned before, it's actually got a mode where it will just do like a dehumidifier. So it takes some of the humidity out of the air. And then it's very comfortable to work out here and it doesn't take much at all to keep it at a comfortable temperature. So just a little bit, but that's because we did all the insulation. So when you're building your shop, I recommend to go a little bit more on your external wall insulation. It doesn't cost that much to go up a little bit. It wasn't that much more for the six inch studs and all that, which we had to do anyway because of the height of the ceiling and it all kind of worked out. So with the insulation all done, the very next thing that got delivered was the sheetrock. And as you can see, we used the half inch sheetrock for the walls. And then for the compressor closet, we used a very specific type of sheetrock which was called a sound barrier or sound deadening sheetrock and what it looked like to me 
was two pieces of normal sheetrock with like a rubber, um, some kind of rubber material in between the two pieces and they were glued together somehow. It was a little bit expensive per square foot, but very, very well worth it to keep the sound from that, um, from that compressor from banging away and echoing around in the shop. And it's extremely effective. I'll link to the top now, uh, the video where we actually show that and we actually use the, the phone to do a sound decibel meter reading with the door open and the door closed. And it's a dramatic difference. And keep in mind on a, a sound scale, one decibel is 10 times. So it's, a, it's an exponential scale and not a linear scale. And so one decibel makes a huge difference. So be sure you go back and check that out if you wanna see how effective that sound deadening sheetrock was. So now it was getting, you know, middle end of November, the sheetrock was in. I uh, came home from work one day and there were guys in here on stilts wandering around with sanders, uh, you know, some kind of orbital sanders and they had sanded the entire, they had mudded uh, one day and come back and sanded the entire shop the next day and did a phenomenal job. Those sheetrock guys were some of the hardest working people I think I ever saw. They took about three or four days to actually get the sheetrock installed and screwed in. They took another day or two to come in and put the mud over all the screw joints or screw holes and the joints and everything where they put the, the pieces together and then um, came back and sanded it all down. And the way the uh, tray and the ceiling turned out, way better than I would have thought. I mean, they had to do a whole bunch of angles and cuts and things like that. And as a result of all that sanding, there was a ton of dust everywhere. At the very end, the uh, sheetrock guys, you know, kind of swept everything up but there's still a boatload of dust on everything. So don't keep anything, don't park a car near uh, your detached garage while it's being built because it'll get covered in dust. And uh, keep that in mind for anything that happens to be in the shop. I wouldn't put anything in here when they're doing the sheetrock work, make sure it's completely cleaned out. Even if you cover it up, I think dust would probably st still get all over everything. And so make sure you've got a really open space when they're coming in to do that sheetrock work so that nothing gets impacted by all that dust and everything. And, and for example, if your mini split happened to already go in, you wanna cover that thing up and tape it off. Now, I held mine off, I didn't let anything go in and actually the company that installed the mini split, they, they had everything ready to go so we could have put it in, but they specifically wanted to wait until after the sheetrock was done because of the dust. So keep that in mind for anything you're gonna do. If you're gonna have workbenches installed or a sink or tables or anything like that, hold all that off until the sheetrock is complete. And like I said, we're now towards the end of November. They started, I think, on the 15th, and I believe that was a Thursday. I went back and looked at the calendar before I shot this video to be sure, and they were done by the next Friday. Uh, I think it was the 15th, it would have been the 22nd maybe, where they completely finished up all of the sheetrock. And so they got it all sanded down, ready to go, it was finished. The only problem was we didn't have any doors and windows in yet, and the temperature was starting to get pretty cold at night and not getting super warm during the day. And now we've pushed into that end of year. And I keep mentioning this because it's critical. We lost five or six weeks at the beginning of the project. And so we're five or six weeks behind what I thought the schedule should be at this point. It wasn't any fault of the builder per se, other than they did have some um, mechanical issues with a piece of equipment. And I've mentioned that a bunch of times, but we had a couple of delays. And so I recommend if you're going to do a shop build, start it earlier in the year rather than later so you don't run into the kind of weather issues I was starting to come across. Okay, this particular video was shot on a GoPro Hero 7. I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you're interested in one. It's supposed to have updated video image stabilization. I am using an external mic, so the sound should be better than the built-in mics. I never recommend using the built-in mics on a GoPro. So tell me what you thought about the video quality. Did it seem smoother to you? Is the color a little bit better? I haven't edited this yet, so I have no idea. We're gonna see what it looks like on the computer when we get to that point. But I've had a few people send me some emails and ask me what camera I've used. The previous, uh, most of the segments of this series have been shot on a Hero 6. Sometimes I use a Canon G7X Mark II. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. It's a great camera, not quite as convenient as the GoPro with its size, just being able to hold it up and carry it around though. So let me know what you thought about the GoPro Hero 7's video quality in this series, or this part of the series. So I think that's a pretty good stopping point for this week's video. We're up to the point where the sheetrock's in, we're finally getting some finishing touches on the shop. Paint will be coming up very soon, as well as the floor coating, and a lot of people have asked about that. I'll be sure to tell you all about the paint. Pretty big decision was made there. I had to have some discussions with the builder, and you'll be kinda, you might be kinda surprised where we ended up going in uh, terms of paint direction because it, it wasn't where I thought I would end up. I intended to paint the place myself, but because we were kind of pushing into those 
cooler winter months, I had to get it done very quickly. So we ended up having to uh, have it painted. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope that you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as our website, www.speediesgarage.net. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you get notified of future content. And hopefully I'll see you out there.